Welcome back to the Lifestyle Show with me, Pam Joseph. Yeah, we've waited for them for two weeks, but it's worth waiting for, isn't it? Um, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Patrick Robinson. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi, Pam. Can you hear me? How are you? I'm good. Very, very good. Very Excellent. Very good. Excellent. We've got you now. We've got you now. And and there's there's no <laughs> surrounding issues going on. This is good. This no. is good. No, yeah. Oh, You're right. Yeah. Nice one. Thank you, Patrick. We were talking earlier because we didn't get you just then and we just went into about sitting in limbo. But I, I want to now, the viewers know a bit more now about sitting in limbo, but I want to talk a bit more about you. We started off saying a bit of you at um, the beginning uh, uh, the other week, but let us start with it again because there's other viewers on and they didn't hear. Um, uh, Lambda. Let's start off with Lambda. Lambda, London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. You started there. How was that for you? Because that was it's seemingly quite even hard to get into it now as a black person. You got into it back then. H how did you get that into enrolled into to, to Lambda? I, I kind of did an uh, amateur dramatics for about five years prior. So from 14, I and it was my hobby, so I loved it. So when knowing I could probably go and study uh, and become an actor that was it I, I said yeah I'm gonna go and try and do that so it took me probably about three months to learn a Shakespeare speech um, as well as obviously a modern piece and I just went for the audition you have to pay for your audition so I could only afford to do one uh, uh, drama school and my uh, director at the time uh, was running the uh, drama group she paid for me to try the drama center so it was drama center first and then i went to lambda and basically i loved uh the audition at lambda and uh fortunate for me i got a recall and then it was a case of uh yes you have a place uh can you get a grant and at the time uh the early days well where were we uh early 80s um, I could get a mature student grant. So fortunately for me, my fees were paid and I got a sort of maintenance grant to survive. And I was still living at home in Deptford. So for me, that was the beginning of, I suppose, what I really, really wanted to do. And um, I loved drama school. So I was there for two and a half years. It's a three year course, but the final year is a sort of showcase of uh, shows where you hopefully get uh, um, maybe an agent from the show that you do. Uh, if you get your leading role, um, maybe once or twice within the year, but generally it's just once, uh, everyone gets a shot. And unfortunately for me, I got um, an agent after my first show in the third year and after Christmas, uh, which was the second term, I left. Um, and I was the first one in my year to leave uh, to uh, go to the RSC. And yeah, that was a company. And it gave me my equity card, which you needed to do 40 weeks work, professional work, um, where you could get your equity card. Now, I think the drama schools give a provisional equity card. But in those days, you had to try and find work uh, as an actor. Fortunately for me, it was at the RSC. So I stayed with them probably yeah, in the next four years. I did four seasons uh, on the trot. And it was more about uh, being able to uh, be seen uh, and, and credited as a, a, um, a good actor. And ultimately, for me, doing the classics was a, a, a litmus test of whether how good you are. Um, and that has nothing to do with colour, that's to just to do with the, the craft. And for me, that's why I stayed uh, with the Royal Shakespeare Company. And after that, I got uh, casualty and, and then many other things came after that, but yes. Yeah. I mean, people really do remember you as Ash. The nickname of Ash in Casualty. I mean, you stayed there for a little bit of a while, though, didn't you? Um, yeah, I, I, I did uh, six years. Um, okay. 90s, that was 1990 to 96, six and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, and obviously I, I sort of left after that. And at the time it was a series as opposed to uh, an ongoing drama that, um, like, you know, uh, EastEnders, Holby, city is it's all year round uh the early days of casualty in the 90s it was a series that lasted five six seven months so there was always you know more work to be had in between series and i was always hopeful that i'd come back for another series so it happened six times and in between those uh, series i did theater so mm -hmm. it was 
a great time. I mean, in the end, I, I moved out of London, uh, got married, had children. So it was very, very busy um, and it enabled me to do what I really wanted to do. But of course, after being in it for six years and I was my early 30s then, it was it was really important for me as far as I was concerned to leave and do other things because... Of course, I was grateful for having got to learn the TV craft, as it were, filming mm. and shooting. Um, and in the end, I needed to play other roles because I, I saw myself it. as an actor. Yeah. As opposed to, you did an American yeah. accent because you, didn't you play a CIA agent um, back in 2003? <laughs> yes. Very alongside Stephen Seagal. How, yeah. you had to craft your American act. Did you listen to... Are there other American actors to craft your accent? You know, you 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 listen to many others, really. You know, one of my heroes and still is is Sidney Poitier, uh, reading his book um, when I was seventeen. You know, that's an inspiration to kind of go, "Wow!" He was washing dishes and he was in in the Bahamas, and he thought, "No, I've got to go and do this," and he wasn't going to do it. anyway. So yes, you listen to everyone uh, that you think is good. Um, you learn from the best. Um, so, and of course, when you're doing certain roles, uh, and if you're fortunate enough in terms of a production, you could have a, a voice coach that comes on board. Uh, if you're doing, you know, like a Southern ac accent uh, and stuff, when as the RSC we did, you know, or um, Eugene O'Neill's All Children's Got, Got Wings, um, All God's Children Got Wings. And basically, yeah, we had a voice coach uh, for the American accent just to get it, you know, fine tuning as it were. But all of that is, is part of the craft and, and you, you do your research. And if you're playing a, you know, a character that happens to be wherever they're from, where you have to learn the accent, that's, that's what you do. And I did do it in drama school, uh, yeah. phonetic, um, which, was, which was great. So there is lots, many ways of doing it, obviously mimicking, or you just study it as, as phonetics. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You, you're moving on from there. And then what we have now in 2007, um, you play a former slave, uh, Peter o when we talk about the right rough crossings, yes. um, <laughs> how was that now? I mean, it, it, you still had to take in the character to a certain degree to play the slave, if you will. Yeah, I mean, based on true events, of course, uh, Simon Sharma, uh, who, who wrote the, the, the basic story, um, and Headlong, who uh, did the production, and it was it was a really heavy piece, um, mm. just knowing that this really happened and dramatizing, yeah. um, and having to do it every night on stage, it, it well it, it sort of takes it out of you because you either have to give it everything, or it it, it just falls flat. And so playing um, a slave who actually succumbs to the British and says yes, okay, help help us, and then they betray him. No surprise there. And then he loses his wife, well, his child first, then his wife, mm. you know, and all because, you know, the other guys said, come on, the British will help us out. And he was the only one who was saying, no, I don't trust them. So, of course, that, that uh, I don't know, visceral kind of depth of feeling that was, you know, needed to, to just imagine being uh, that slave who had no hope and and being betrayed um yeah every night doing that took its toll um mm. but i felt it was it was very well done some nights i don't even remember how it went because i was so much in the, so in in, it. Yeah. the people yeah. on stage frightened there's a friend of mine who was in that day officially and he said wow he said p i was frightened because i i oh, wow i didn't and in the end yeah he saw that I was, I said, I don't even know what I said, whether I got it right or not. But in the end, the feeling was always there because I was always, you know, um, trying to be that 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 man that that went through that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's a lot more in between, but reflective of what you've just said, I'm just going to do now. Um, go straight into Sicily oh. oh, playing it deep, playing a real thing. This is even more poignant because this is this is today's age where you you were playing a character may not have been a slave but he went through horror in this yeah. age. and and again you used i'm thinking you used that ability when you did the slave that kind of thing to go into the go into the guy you used that didn't you because it was reflective it was like it was really you that was yeah 
Yeah, well, you know, most of the uh, stuff that I've done uh, generally, when you when you do, you obviously have to do your research and, and you use a lot of your imagination and your own experiences. Now, I know that from, you know, reading the script of Sitting in Limbo, I kind of knew the man. Um, and, you know, it, it was kind of all of us, if you know what I mean, you know, people yeah. of colour, Indian heritage yeah. generally. It was all of us. We we kind of recognised that thing, um, and it, I can say it could have been my brother. Could have been it was a you know a, a, yeah. a brother of mine that happened to as well. So it they, it was like there wasn't much to draw on because it was all it's with me. I'm bringing all of the stuff that um, my life and my heritage. Basically, I'm sat here because so many of my ancestors fought. And in the end, I, I bring them with me. So, of course, you know, when when they're there with you, you feel strong. Um, and in the end, you, you know, you don't have to say much. And that was probably part of what I felt was uh, more powerful. Um, and, and I kind of had I've had that in my own life anyway, to do with being in school in the uh, mid 70s um, and dealing with National Front and, you know, Blacks against whites in terms of football and being in an old boys school in South East London, it was heavy. Mm-hmm. And of course, sometimes the way to get through, I wasn't one of those who was what you might say a rude boy who was into the bravado of saying, you know, look at me, I can, you know, I'm the machismo geezer. No, I, that mm-hmm. wasn't me. I'd be very, very quiet. And I suppose that essentially can you just let the tournament use their imagination because you can say nothing be passive and just look straight at them yeah and that's it all you need to do is just you know focus because and that's what i believe so many of us have had to do yeah. is uh take it um when we are dealing with injustice and not come out with anything and so it leaves whoever's giving you the, the stick they're going to be thinking about all kinds of things and they don't know and that's how I got through school I didn't have any fights in school I just would look and say nothing and be very passive and they wouldn't know what I could possibly do but I wasn't a bad athlete so I was in most of the school team so I could handle myself or I looked like I could handle myself yeah so and it's it's letting them have the thing in their mind instead of you showing them something that they go oh I can deal with that yeah, indeed, indeed. When I first uh, introduced you to the, the, the viewers, and I said, well, you know, come on, I said you're one of the best known um, uh, actors in, in Britain, but I also said also writer and director, and they were thinking, well, what does she mean, writer and director? I, I can say it now, Monument, 1998. And yeah. funnily enough, as we deal with the BLM, as we deal with everything um, uh, BLM movement, uh, BLM issues, BLM marches, BLM protests, and then this is this film called Monument in 1998 that you co-wrote, you directed, and it's all about Bristol, Colston, and this the statue. I mean, didn't you think, look at him there. I mean, didn't you think, you know, cool, blimey, they, they've got his statue down. I started doing that in 1998. Let's talk about Monument. Let us first talk about Monument. How did that come well, about? Yeah, well, um, Monument was an idea of uh, a friend of mine now, James, James Helps who um, works in TV, um, art director, production designer, and he worked on Casualty after I'd left, but I was still doing stuff in Bristol um, in terms of little projects. And a friend of a friend said, he has an idea and he would like you to play the main guy in this short film. He hasn't got any money, but you know, it might, if you're on board, it might make help to get this dosh. I said, okay, let's have a look at the script. When I met him and read the script, um, he then explained to me that he had this idea and he'd gotten a writer uh, in Bristol who was mainly a poet and he wanted to try his hand at screen um, at screenplay. So in the end, he said, yeah, we can try this. So we gave him the idea. He wrote the script. I read it and said, this is a really good idea. Who's directing it? And he said, I haven't got that yet. I said, I'll do it. <laughs> Just like that. So I, you know, because I felt passionate about it because I'd lived in Bristol five years. I saw throughout Bristol so much history that obviously said to me, slave trade said to me, my gosh, it's all here. And then of course, living in certain parts of of Bristol, um, 
in terms of renting a flat and I saw it up in Clifton, Cottom and various places, Danny St. Paul's, Montpellier. I saw the, the, the different gradients. I saw the hierarchy. I saw how it was, you know, made to do with the history. So when I saw this script, I went, I know this story. So basically the story is about a journalist, TV journalist, local TV journalist, who wants to get a story out to the region that uh, he feels is really important for the region to know and understand. And basically the story is about a slave ship being found off the coast of Bristol and um, it should be reported and then highlighted that Bristol took part in the slave trade and most of the, um, you know, the, the funding that came to the city came from the slave traders. And there are many monuments to the slave traders and slave merchants in Bristol but none representing the slaves. So that's the basic story. And what happens to this journalist is that the story is just about to be aired and then the powers that be pull it. And he's upset, of course, because it, it, I play the journalist, he's black. So of course he's not that, that happy. So he, he tries to get the story out and that's what he does in the end, by hook or by crook, because it was a story that the whole region needed to see. And it's called Monument. So, of course, I have little bits of Monument in the uh, in the film where you see, you know, Edward Colston on on that little plinth where my you know one of my characters goes by. You know, all the little bits of Queen Square. You know, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, Park Street. You know, so many bits of Bristol. You know, the, the Clifton Sus Suspension Bridge. So you see everything to do with, and that was the criteria of the film anyway because it had to be something pertaining to the west country uh, and based in the west country um and of course you know uh we had to literally submit a script and if we were fortunate to be uh shortlisted we'd then go for an interview and there were six bursaries to be had of 50k to make your film and that's what we got we you know won that so and i made this in 1998 yeah so when i saw the statue being pulled down i went <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It just highlights what people, what I've been saying, I believe, for a very long time. You know, and, you know, yeah. you know the film did get aired on uh, uh, ITV, HTV in the West Country. Um, and, you know, and I've since put it on, uh, well, my son sorted it out and put it on YouTube. So it's yeah. on uh, called Monument TV film 1998. Um, but yes, in terms of history, that's a story that I'd like to tell and yeah. do more of that and that's you know i mean i did that in 1998 so i've yeah. been trying to do my own thing but obviously trying to earn a living and and you yeah. know and so now people are sort of like, oh no, i think now it's going to be brought up to the forefront now yes. monument has to be brought up to the forefront significantly what's happened and do you know patrick i'm sure you do that we had for one day a lady that you know she's a protester but really none of us knew her at all jen reed for one day was on that plinth for one day, this artist yes. it for one yes. day. Yes, yes. Amazing. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> oh my God. Fantastic. I can't believe it. But it's a dialogue, isn't it? Because, you know, I it, I made a film about this, uh, not about this, but, you know, highlighting the fact that we don't know the history. And I'm not talking about black people, I'm talking about everyone. Mm. And I, and I, you know, have forever been saying, you know, um, asking the question, who sanctioned having a month for black history? Who's, who said, go on, have that? I, and I kind of go, why, why is it just a month? And I did ask that question. And then I remember hearing um, Morgan Freeman saying, that's disgraceful. And I went, I agree with that. Yeah. Why is it, and why is it called black history when I believe it's history? It's only when you specialize, it's called, you know, black history. Yeah. And the thing is that most people, I believe, that if they see black history and they're white, then they're going to go, oh, that's not for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. I don't see why you call it black history, essentially, it should be history, simple as that. Yeah. And that's why I feel that so many stories now need to be told about the black experience of being yeah. on this planet. Yeah. Simple as that. Within the, within the curriculum of history, if you will, at schools and colleges and, and what have you. Um, Why did it take, um, you know, uh, for me in the 70s, a 12, 13 year old boy to see uh, a, a, a series called Roots on TV to know 
that black people were slaves. I was like, ah, what? And you go, why haven't been told this? And when we was doing, you know, uh, social studies, I remember in second, third year, I, you know, we did the first world war, second world war, kings and queens of England, Tudor, you know, and you can't think, whoa, hold on a minute. Where do we fit in? All of these, you know, the brothers in this room, we don't seem to fit in, but you know, how can you challenge and who do you challenge, especially yeah. when you're 13? How, you, 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 you just don't realize and then you do. And of course, for me, I've had to, have my own research in terms of history and that's come through life um as it were you know finding out about X when i'm 21 thinking oh my gosh is that what happened is that what they've done to people you know uh, to us essentially so yeah it's 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 sad that now i'm 56 and you think god i know some stuff now in terms of my history yeah. and a lot of people don't know yeah. generally so yeah. i go I've had to really research, and of course, this internet thing has been, you know, on so many platforms, been great to go down and, yeah. and yeah. search stuff. Um, but yeah, it's 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 it, it's it, it's something now that I feel everyone, you know, we need to teach the youngsters. Of course, I mean the youngsters being, you know, four, fives, and six. Yeah, everything now, and yeah. I believe they're the ones will make the great change. Yes, indeed. I believe so in that too, Patrick. Life, it will come to fruition. <laughs> yes, and 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 indeed, and you know when we see people like you and, and what you say and what you do and and following all our heroes and sheroes, who you are one of, you know, it's good. We can promote this and we we send it out and for young people to hear what you're saying, hear what those sporting heroes, the pioneers of sporting, think behind and everything like that, and then we we at least give those young people an idea, and if they want to follow up, and they will follow up on it. They can research and what have you. And like you said, internet sometimes does play a positive part in, in youngsters' movements. Patrick, I want you to give everybody an idea of where they can look up about you, projects that you do. In fact, can I just ask you a very quick, quick question? What is your projects coming up to as we back off 2020? Any Anything you can let us know about? Um, well, I am... Uh, I'm going to do an episode of a BBC series coming up. Um, just an episode, which is which is nice. It'll be on the BBC, I don't know when. Um, and most people know that. It features lots of uh, dark-skinned folk, let's put it that way. <laughs> I don't know if I can, you know. Um, and then um, I am working on um, <coughs> a project which I'm hoping to, uh, uh, well, I will be directing basically is just getting it commissioned um and joint com uh, director and uh, and it's it's another historical tale based on the truth and it's uh and i'm not sure if i can talk about it yet but it is uh, it's set in the 60s oh. and it's set in bristol so in the end it's it's based on true true events mm. um, and uh, basically, uh, we've just getting the team together, and and you know, and I've had this idea since the early uh, late nineties, early two thousands. Again, trying to do it more, uh, uh, trying to put more energy into it in the last two three years, and then suddenly because things have sort of exploded in one way, um, I, I I've been able to get my voice heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. in the end, without, without going knock knock knock, someone have said. What are you doing? What do you want to do? What have you got? Um, I've, got I've got this and I've got that and I've got this. What about these things? They went, that's a very good idea. Yeah. So for me, it's been um, a sort of, yeah, I'm saying, yeah. okay, let's let's do this. Let's let's go forward. I, because, I, I'm, gonna give you a little, I, I'm just going to say something because when you said something through the late 90s and you said in Bristol and then you're saying it again, um, is it something to do with transport? But then I'm not going to give it out. Is it something to do about a transport thing? Am I on there? <laughs> All right, I ain't going to say now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this is, you know, and, well, Pam, you see, you know, in terms of people being, you know, knowledgeable, you are, of course. So that's something that you know about. And I know that there's, you know, hundreds of thousands, but millions of people who don't know oh, about it. And I'm not talking black people, I'm talking people. So it's another tale of saying this changed history in a very, very important, significant way in legislation to do with race yeah. in this country. And why don't we know this story? Exactly. Why? 
How long does it take for us to, it's taken so much to kind of go, oh, we might have a listen to that. Now, you know, all I can say is that I found out about it and went, I've got to do this. And that was, you know, now 20 years ago. Because but then happened. how long ago did this thing happen? The 60s. There you go. Oh, so, we learn come again. It always has to come again. You know, when we do it, it happens. And then we come in years later and then this, this is happening to us. Pat, Patrick, we really got, I've just, I've been, t I've been told off. We've really got to round up. So I have to say to you, thank you ever so much, Patrick. Give out your um, social media details very quickly. Oh, I, I, I'm not very, um, you know. Googling then. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not really. Look at me, like do the, the work will tell, talk, speak for itself. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Patrick. Take care. Speak soon. Yes. Bless thank you. Bye. Okay, we're going to move quick on this. Oh my gosh, we're running out of time, but you know, a little short break. Okay, musical, <laughs> musical.